Hi, hello. This is the um, part two of the original video where I was talking about how I'm planning on using Cafe Note um, notebook in 2022 as my daily planner. And in this part two, we're going to talk about how that plan worked out and how exactly I'm doing a day on two pages spread. So stay tuned. Let's see. In my previous attempt to film this, which fell victim to my bad camera incident, where I purchased a new camera and in my excitement filmed a bunch of videos only to find out that the footage was not going to be usable. So I am refilming this one as well. And uh, because it's the second time around, I already have left from the first time sort of a general schematics of what my planning for the day looks like, which allows me to now conveniently go through that with you. Um, this planner is very functional. I don't try to write nicely. I'm not really doing any decoration in it. Uh, because this is my beloved Tomo River paper, I could probably use watercolors and in fact any kind of decoration if I wanted, except that I don't. My daily planners, especially my to-do planner, so to say, quote-unquote, is where I want to be very functional and where I want to get things done. So let's see how that corresponds to the plan I outlined in my part one video and um, I'll let you know how it works. This is Cafe Note notebook in A6 size. As you can see, it perfectly fits A6 cover. Um, this particular is the um, Hobonichi cover from the latest release, if I'm not mistaken and uh, i absolutely love it so i was very glad that i'm still going to be able to use my kobonichi covers on the cafe note there is no dates no pages in front or in the back that serve any other purpose than just this blank grid so with this perfect canvas, I could do anything I wanted. Let's see what I actually chose to do. Um, on top, I put the date. Remember this entire spread, both pages are for the same day. So here goes the date. Then I decided that some things I need to check mark, such as you know, um, things that I want to do every day, workouts, meditation, that sort of things. They go up here because they are the same day to day. It's always easy to find them in the same area of the planner and it's easy to copy them from day to day so that I could check mark them. And of course, because they are not pre-printed, they are actually not set in stone. So should I have a type of a schedule for a day where I can't do some of these things, I'm not going to write them down. Only to leave them unchecked. I'm just not going to include them as part of my to-do. Because the main purpose of this notebook is to house all of my to-dos which was the main purpose of my Hobonichi. However, in order to sort of visually plan the amount of to-dos that I can accomplish within a day, I also need to know what happens during that day. So on this side where I put my chores and personal to-dos and family obligations and you know, taking care of pets, all of that goes over here, just as originally planned in video part one. 
So here we go with the um, in fountain pen because this is something I cannot erase <laughs> and uh, I will put down the appointments and sort of think that maybe not an appointment but something I really want to do so that it's also an immovable object like here I put a game night for the family for an example. I put down when buses depart, when buses arrive, um, different appointments that I have in between, um, all the after school activities that the kids have afterwards, because that allows me to just see if I can actually do a lot of things or pretty much do nothing in certain part of the day. So then in between those appointments, using them as my guiding posts, I will put down my to-dos. And like I said, on this side, it's anything but work. Um, this setup works for me running a small business, kind of on the side, as a side hustle. But it also would work for somebody who works... Um, a regular nine to five job. So with this side, we talked about what goes here, everything but work and all of the appointments and other specific immovable events. Then I will have more checklists on the side here. So I have my, for example, social media consumption listed out here. I have things that I need to do for the pets on a semi-regular basis listed here. So anyway, this area is for further checklists if you need more than just that space. Alternatively, if you don't have that many checklists that you routinely use, you could put your top three, your priority tasks up here. That's kind of like what a Hobonichi allows you to do because right up here it has the date and then here is a blank space where you could put your focus of the day and then one or several most important tasks if you wanted to do. And then all of your checklist could just go here. And what I also put here on the side is, and I also color coded with a different color, than my regular writing so that it stands up. I put uh, to-do lists that are not my to-dos. Those are the things that I need to do with the kids or I need to make sure that kids get done. So this goes here. Then on this side, as we said, it's everything work and it's completely up to the user how that's organized. It could be just a total brain dump of everything I need to do. I tend to break the lists apart down into um, environment. So like everything I need to do on Instagram, everything I need to do on Facebook, everything I need to do when I'm sitting at the PC, everything I need to do while I'm using iPad because uh, I work in Procreate on iPad. So. That breaking down by area helps me zero in that, okay, so now when I'm on my main computer, what do I need to do? I'm only looking at that portion of the list and making sure I knock it all out so that later in the day, I don't need to go back there. That is sort of a batching system. If you're familiar with batching system, only it's not batching by time as much as it's batching by space which is also then in turn helping batch by time because if I knock out everything I need to do in that particular space that I don't need to go back to that space. But if we're talking about, say, Instagram, then it's definitely not a physical space and I'm not looking to complete all of the tasks usually in one go, but it still helps me to know that, okay, on Instagram in that area of business, quote unquote, this is what I need to do. So usually there is an area left down here and this is where I put um, creative projects, journaling and planning. 
so I have um, some planners that I try to update on the daily basis and again this is more like a checklist then but then I have some journals and project notebooks let's call them that way that I don't look at every day so I'm trying to plan throughout the week okay so something happened I need to be working in that particular project uh, notebook or I need to be updating this specific journal because I haven't in a while because I don't want to fall behind that sort of thing I used to have a spread in my bujo which told me per day of the week what I'm supposed to be updating making sure that everything flows smoothly with the journals but I am reducing the number of journals at this point and I'm trying to I'm trying to have a very limited number of things like that that I need to be updating and purposefully reminding myself that I need to update like the journaling especially gratitude journaling is going to happen in my weekly planner um, there's going to be a video possibly right after this one or maybe right before where I'm talking about uh, my new weekly planner system which has a daily space for gratitude journaling so that's where that's gonna happen and then I will not have to write down here for myself how take gratitude journal it's just going to happen organically and that's exactly what I would like to happen with most of my planning this is how I know that my planner system works that I don't need to remind myself or write down a to-do list hey update your power sheets because you have daily checklist and power sheets but you don't look in your power sheets more than two times a month so go ahead and update it um, that seemed to be artificial at that point if I'm not naturally looking at the planner every day if I'm not touching it every day then I you know I need to reconsider if it's actually working for me and it has you know daily steps in it but I'm not still opening it every day so maybe something's not working maybe something needs to be tweaked in the system but anyway so that's the overview of how it works so because i'm using two pages per day this book would normally last me a year but is only going to last me then half a year so in the second half a year i'm actually going to be using hobonichi which will have a date at the top of the page and all of those dates are going to be wrong because I'm going to be only starting in, say, July sometime. So I will have to cover up those dates. And I'm already dreading how thick it will become if I cover up with um, sticker, even washi tape on every single day. It's probably going to add quite a bit of bulk. And you gotta consider it, it's going to be always just the top of the page so i'm thinking that i might just have to allow myself to let it look incorrectly just cross it out write in a new date and put my checklist in the other open space on the other side is it going to really, really test my perfectionism? Yes. But on the other hand, it provides me an opportunity to still use the Hobonichi, which I purchased for this year as well, and um, not wasting that wonderful book and still staying in touch with an old friend, so to say, is actually a price I'm willing to faith, pay for and perfect looking pages so i might actually film a little plan with me on the daily once i get to that because this is you know this is pretty straightforward but that and adapting those two hobonichi spreads to this system might be not exactly that uh, you know straightforward especially for my brain and maybe for yours too and maybe 
might turn out entertaining. But anyway, we have to make it there first. Like I said, that's going to be the second half of the year. And for the first half of the year, we are set up here. The other parts of setup, as I said, this Hobonichi cover, it houses the fountain pen. This is a twisty uh, because uh, I like to have appointments and things like that um, in the fountain pen. I like to color code the planner portion in the different color than the rest of the writing, um, just so it stands out. And then I like to color code the kids portion again, so it stands out in a different color. And I'm accomplishing this color coding by the use of this three color friction pen. Got it just off Amazon and I'm going to leave a link. It actually comes in different colors of the body. If you're interested as well, you can give it a look and Amazon's going to show you everything that um, that is available. And it comes with one refill, but I'm sure more refills are possible. In fact, I will have to find out very soon if more refills are available because we are in January and I already went through a um, couple of the colors. So I'll keep you updated. For right now, it seems to be working very, very well. And um, let me know if that's something that could be useful and helpful for you. I would be very happy to hear that. And have a great day. Like and subscribe.